Sanjay, in your book, you talk about the idea that what we used to think of as the lines between life and death, this black and white mm. thing, is, is changing. Yeah, I mean, we, we have this sort of conventional wisdom that it's sort of a binary thing. Uh, one moment you're here, the next moment you're not. And I think scientifically, we know that's not true. Uh, death is very much a process. Uh, things happen in the body. Things happen at all different levels of the body. Uh, the good news is that really at so many points during that process, things can be reversed. Uh, you can start to look at that death as a process and turn it in the other direction, which you know I just found incredibly fascinating. Deepak, in a recent uh, Pew poll, they, they discovered that 30% of Catholics now believe in reincarnation. And for the first time ever, more people, 49%, say they've had a mystical or religious experience, more than say they haven't. What, what's happening? What do you make of this change? Well, in lots of things are happening. First of all, there's a lot of interesting science now that is suggesting, and by no means is this clear, there's a lot of controversy of, about this, but there's a lot of interesting science that our consciousness, which is uh, the place where we perceive, think, emote, imagine, have insight, intuition, choice making, that this part of us is not a product of our brain. You know, scientists have until recently believed that, you know, just like your gallbladder secretes bile, and your pancreas secretes pancreatic juice, your brain secretes imagination. So you're, separating the, you're separating the brain and the mind. Yes, the, the, the mind, that consciousness, the one I'm talking to right now, is not a product of the brain, but is localizing itself through the brain. Just like people who are seeing us right now on their screens, you know, we are not in their television boxes. We are coming through these airwaves, and they are perceiving us, but if they open the box, they won't find Deepak or Jeff or anyone there. So if I look inside you, I won't find your soul because it's not there. In fact, your body is experienced in your consciousness. Your mind is experienced in your consciousness. And the evidence is pointing out that this consciousness is non-local, which means it exists outside of space-time, and therefore, mathematically, mm. it's impossible to destroy this consciousness. Dinesh, what do you make of these numbers? What, you, you've studied this. It's a, it's a big shift in philosophy of how people are looking at life after death. I think the issue is absolutely huge, and a friend of mine who got cancer recently made the observation to me that, that when, when something like this happens, you discover that the normalcy of your everyday life is a bit of a sham, because we live life as if we're never going to die, and then suddenly we have to confront that. Uh, the question of whether something comes after death, I don't, you know, whether you're a believer or whether you're a skeptic, you're going to have to wonder about that. It's going to make a lot of difference in, in how you live now, and I think what makes our time exciting and unique is that now there's actually some evidence about all this, uh, not only near-death experiences, but evidence from physics, evidence from biology, evidence from the science of the brain, uh, all of which seem to suggest that the old idea that simply our mind and our brain are the same, and, and, and when we die, our brains obviously die, so if, if that's the case, then there's no life after death. But there are new possibilities created by modern knowledge, and that's really what, uh, what, what I think is exciting today. Sanjay, in, in medicine, you're experimenting with something, even here in New York, I think, with hypothermia, mm -hmm. trying to cool the body down to expand the process of death. Well, you know, for doctors and any healthcare professional, it's really about trying to buy time. So if you, if you buy into this idea that death is a process, it doesn't happen just like that. So the thing we're used to hearing, which is in the medical room, the doctor says, time of death, 318. That's, right. that's, I mean, that's exactly right, Jeff. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was a profound experience that I had as a medical student when I watched this, this person come in, a patient who was around the same age as me, after a car accident, and everyone was working on him, the, the trauma surgeons, the neurosurgeons, everybody. Uh, and at some point, literally, someone said, okay time of death, 234. And I remember thinking, that's it? I mean, it just seems so arbitrary even back then. And I think in many ways, you know, that, that's been the hunt for me. That's what I've been searching for. But with regard to hypothermia, it's this idea that, look, if your heart has failed, uh, you have one of two things that you can do. You can either restart the heart to get oxygen through the body, or you can decrease the demand of the body for that oxygen. Hypothermia sort of decreases the demand. It sort of lowers the set point a bit, buying doctors and healthcare team more time. And, and Deepak, if that's, if that's right, then it, it, it ties into what you believe, I think, which is that life and death is just, it, there is no beginning or end. It is well, this long birth continuum. Birth and death are space-time events in the continuum of life. So the opposite of life is not 
death. The opposite of death is birth, and the opposite of birth is death, and life is the continuum of birth and death, which goes on and on. And life is, uh, is uh, as he what? said, it's a process. It's one process. It's perception, cognition, emotions, moods, imagination, insight, intuition, creativity, choice-making. These are not the activities of your networks. You orchestrate these activities through your synaptic networks. But if I ask you to imagine the color red or look at the color red, there's no red in your brain. There's just electrical firings. What's the relationship between the subjective experience you have in your consciousness and what happens in the brain? This is what is called the hard question in science today.